Hi everyone and thanks for clicking on the thumbnail. So whether you're a complete beginner or you're just looking to refine your resin skills, this tutorial is a perfect starting point. I will be teaching you all the basics of selecting the right epoxy resin, proper mixing techniques and my expert tips on pouring resin like a pro. And by the end, you'll have a stunning and Instagram worthy resin dish. So I'm going to make it simple and guide you through the process of creating a beautiful beginner friendly dual colored resin dish. So just to make this as easy as possible for beginners, I really do highly recommend this resin kit from Let's Resin. And I will leave all the links to everything used in this tutorial in the description of this video, plus a 10% discount code for you. So the kit comes with everything that you'll need to start creating with resin. It comes with stir sticks, uh, measuring cups, epoxy resin, mica powder, resin dyes, gold leaf, glitter, a silicone stick and a mini and mini scoop spoons. And the only thing that this kit doesn't come with is a silicone mold. And of course you can make whatever you like. But for this example, I am using a silicone mold again from Let's Resin or just shop on Amazon to make the dish. But before you can start on mixing resin, it's really important to level out your table. And if you do this now, you won't forget and you won't get a lopsided resin dish, which uh, don't ask me how I know, but it does happen. And also included in the kit are two plastic sheets for protecting your table. And this is always a good idea. And now it's time to gather all the materials that you'll need for this resin dish. And so in the kit is this selection of gold, silver leaf and glitter. And for this dish, I've chosen the gold with the purple and pink glitter. And of course, the most important material that you'll need is the epoxy resin. So this is also included in the kit. And this is a one to one ratio. And I'll explain what that means later on. Also included in the kit are a bunch of these really practical measuring cups with volumes both in milliliters and one side in ounces. And because here in France we use the metric system, I am going to be using the milliliter side of these plastic cups. And now on to step four. So measuring epoxy resin correctly is really crucial to making sure that the resin cures hard. So in this case, this is a one to one ratio epoxy resin, which means you will measure one equal part of part A, which is the resin, to one equal part of B, which is the hardener. And also this resin is measured by volume and that's why I'm crouching down so I can see the level by eye. So some resin brands can be weighed using a digital scale, but not many and certainly not this brand. So in this case, I'm making a total of 120 milliliters, which means all I need to do is divide that by two, which gives me 60. And now all I need to do is pour 60 milliliters each of both parts A and B. So starting with A, so you don't lose track and use the handy pump also included in this resin kit and pump out 60 milliliters worth of part A. And then you do the exact same thing in the same cup if you prefer, or you could use another cup. Pour another 60 milliliters of part B. And if you do, you will have the perfect ratio for this brand of resin. So these measurements will only work when using a one to one ratio resin. And now on to step five. So mixing the two parts correctly, apart from not over mixing, the best way to mix part A with part B is to mix well, but not too fast, or you'll get loads of micro bubbles that just won't have time to escape as the resin cures. So I find the best method is whilst you're mixing is to just scrape both the sides and the bottom of the mixing cup with your spatula as you mix. And then that way you'll get both parts mixed properly and you'll have no soft spots in any of your final creations. And now it's time for the fun part. I'm going to be adding gold and glitter to one cup and then we're going to mix some color to another cup and we're going to create this pretty two-toned effect. 
And in this kit comes a packet of little mini scoop spoons. They are really practical for scooping out little small amounts of glitter, or as you'll see later on, it's also great for scooping mica powder. So I'm just using a new cup and I'm splitting the mix into two, so around 60 millilitres in each cup. So I'm going to start with just adding the entire little pot of gold leaf into the cup. And then I am going to add two different glitters. I'm going to use this purple one and a pink one. And at first I just thought maybe I would just put a little, but this is a great example to show you how great that little scooper is. But then I decided I wanted all of it and I just tipped it all in. So in that goes, and then I'm going to add the pink one too. And of course you can choose whichever color combinations you like. Comes with five. I just love the purple and the pink. And then just very gently mix it around. You don't need to go crazy at this part. It just needs to be combined enough. And then just leave that to the side and then we will start mixing our mica powder. So for the mica powder, I'm gonna go with a black one. You could also use some resin dye that's both included in the kit. This one is the black mica powder, although it came out a little bit more charcoal gray, but it's still really pretty. So using the handy mini scoop, I'm going to do two of these and two will do just for this amount. So that's 60 milliliters in that cup. And then mix this around and you do want to make sure that you mix your mica powder correctly because if you don't, you will get little lumps that are kind of like when you're making pancakes that don't mix together and then they float to the surface whilst it's curing. So just want to show you what's also included in the kit. It's this little mini handy cups and this ocean white pigment paste, which is perfect for making ocean waves. Also in the kit is this silicone spatula and we'll need that later for getting rid of some bubbles on the sides. And another selection of gold mica powder, some red, blue, purple, green, and of course the black that we just used. And now it's finally time to pour. And for this two-toned effect, which is really popular with resin artists, just start with the clearest first and pour it all into one side of your silicone mold. Then you can pour the darker color, in this case the black, on the other side of the silicone mold and just Fill both sides up until they meet in the middle. And a pro tip when using resin silicone molds is to try and get out as many air pockets that form on the bottom as you pour. And to do this, I'm going to use this silicone stick that's included in the kit. And silicone is perfect for these type of molds as they don't scratch the mold, which will be impossible to get rid of. So I really don't recommend using a wooden stick or a toothpick or anything metal to scrape the sides or bottom. Then cleanup is really easy. Um, I always have a packet of domestic wet wipes in my studio. These are perfect for wiping down these stir sticks, uh, your hands for wiping any resin drips on the table. And then for the cups, there is no need to clean these out. This is why I prefer to use just one cup when measuring out resin. That way, when it cures, the resin in the cup dries hard and then you can use it again and again for other pours. And now the waiting starts and lots of patience. So do leave this alone. Do not touch it. 
just leave it to harden overnight. And that is always my pro tip for beginners. You really need to let this harden for a full 24 hours before unmolding. That way it's hard enough and it won't bend out of shape when you unmold it. So I'm going to leave this overnight and I'll be back in the morning. And now the part that you've been looking forward to, the unmolding or demolding, I'm never really sure which is correct. Anyways, it's time and hopefully you've left it overnight and now it's hard enough to unmold so that it keeps its shape. And now a little tip about the difference between fully cured and hardened. So most resins will fully cure in around three to four weeks. So each brand will differ, but as a general rule, this dish could still move around and bend a little bit if you leave it, say, on an uneven surface. This is why I always recommend leaving it to fully cure for around three weeks on a flat surface before selling or gifting. Um, obviously, if you use it for yourself, you'll know it's not fully cured, and so you'll be careful. So, of course, it is hardened enough to use, but just be aware, epoxy resin any brand will need a few weeks for a full cure. So if you have any further questions about resin, leave them in a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'll see you back for another fun resin project very soon. Don't forget to check out my other videos on my channel and please do leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great week everyone. Bye!